Hi again, everyone. In this particular example, I'm asked to minimize this particular function subject to this equation here. Okay, so this is known as a constraint, and we want to find the minimum value of f or where the minimum occurs such that this particular constraint or this equation is also satisfied. Okay, this is a, um, a typical problem that where we apply the method of Lagrange multipliers. Okay, so essentially we solve the following equation. Okay, grad f equals lambda grad g. Okay, now the lambda here is just a number and it's known as the Lagrange multiplier. Okay, essentially what we're doing, we're looking to solve this for points x, y, z that satisfy this equation for some non-zero lambda. Okay, now that's a lot of information. So, to simplify the calculations, I'm going to introduce a function known as the Lagrangian function. Okay. Now this Lagrangian function is defined to be f minus lambda g, okay? So for our problem, it's x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus lambda times g, which is 2x plus y minus z minus 1, okay? Now, in particular, what we do is we calculate the critical points of this function L. Now, calculating the critical points is actually equivalent to solving this, this equation here. Okay, so we're calculating the critical points of this Lagrangian function, okay? So to do that, we solve the following equations. Remember, a function L has its critical points when the partial derivatives are all equal to zero. Okay, so let's calculate the partials and set them equal to zero. So L sub x is going to be 2x minus 2 lambda, and we set that equal to 0. All right. L sub y is going to be 2y minus lambda. And we set that equal to 0. And finally, dl dz is going to be 2z plus lambda, and we set that equal to zero. Now you may think, well, hang on, there's a, there's a lambda here, it's a function of lambda. What happened to the DLD lambda? Well, that's actually contained up here in the constraint, okay? It's very easy to check that. So we have three equations. And we have four unknowns. However, let's not forget again, about this constraint equation. Now from the first equation here, I get x equals lambda. From the second equation, I get uh, y equals lambda on 2. And from the third equation, I get z equals minus lambda on 2. All right, what we're going to do now is take these 
uh, expressions and substitute back into the constraint equation. Okay, so we're going to get 2 lambda plus lambda on 2 uh, minus minus lambda on 2 minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so we're going to get um, 3 lambda equals 1. So lambda will equal 1 third. Okay, so now we can go back here and work out the point that we're interested in. Okay, so x will be one third, y will be one sixth, and z will be minus one sixth. Okay, so this point here is the point that gives f a minimum subject to this constraint. Now, some of you may be asking, well, how do I know it's a minimum? Well, if we think about geometrically what this function means, it's the square of the distance between any point x, y, z and the origin. Okay? Now, that point x, y, z also has to lie on this plane. Okay? This is the equation of a plane. So think about this plane any point on that plane and calculating the minimum distance from this plane to the origin. Okay, There's got to be a minimum distance. But what is the maximum distance between the plane and the origin? Well, the answer is there is not one. There, there, there isn't a maximum. Okay, So this problem only has a minimum. Other problems in Lagrange multipliers do have a maximum and a minimum. Some of them only have maximum. Okay. Um, but this is a very simple problem. Um, sometimes when you get to this stage, you're going to have to be a bit more creative. The, the equations here were solved very easily, but it's not always that easy. Um, but this is a very, very, a very standard, very straightforward um, problem from Lagrange multipliers.